Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to what a lot of physicists refer to as the biggest mystery in the universe. The mystery of electromagnetism and the mystery behind the fine structure constant. Something that I'm going to explain in just a few seconds. But before we start, well, here's the thing. When it comes to electromagnetism, it's surprisingly one of the most influential forces around us. I mean, just the fact that I'm able to sit on a chair and not fall through it, or the fact that we have surfaces, we have things we can touch, or the fact that pretty much everything around us acts the way it is, including things like water, things like atmosphere, all of this is really due to the very specific properties of electromagnetism. For example, the electromagnetic repulsion is the reason we don't fall through our chairs. The electromagnetic attraction creates various types of liquids, various types of solids, and also various types of states of matter that can then create life on Earth. But when it comes down to it, when it comes to electromagnetism, and when it comes to the formula behind electromagnetism, a lot of this can kind of be described in this formula right here, with most of the theory and the description behind all of this being made by Arnold Sommerfeld back in the late 1800s. But within this formula lies this unusual constant. It's known as the fine structure constant. A constant that's roughly equivalent to 1 over 137. Not exactly 137, but very close to it. And a constant that's essentially a number without any dimension. It doesn't have any units. With the idea of fine structure simply being a description of spectral lines of atoms because of the way electrons move around atoms. The actual explanation is a little bit more complex than that, but it's the formation of this fine structure that you see or basically the formation of spectral lines, that in essence creates the idea of fine structure constant. Although more precisely, it's an idea that describes the strength of electromagnetism and electromagnetic interaction between various charged particles. So this constant is a kind of a description of the strength of electromagnetic interaction. More specifically, it's a connection between the actual charge of the particle and the electromagnetic field. But by extension, it also starts affecting a lot of other things. For example, it's also connected to the strength of the interaction between electrons and photons, or the electrostatic energy between two electrons at a certain distance. Except that we still don't really understand where exactly it comes from, what exactly it actually means, and more importantly, if it's even a constant. As a matter of fact, back in the days, Richard Feynman, one of the most influential quantum mechanics theorists, and one of the most important physicists of the 20th century literally could not stop thinking about it. He wrote about it many times, he talked about it to a lot of different physicists, and encouraged everyone he met to continuously try to pursue the idea of fine structure constant in order to really understand it. He wasn't sure if it's related to other constants, such as for example pi, and even referred to it as a kind of a magic number that comes to us with no understanding of its origins greatest damn mystery of physics. That's what he used to say about it. To quote him, you might say the hand of God wrote the number, and we don't know how he pushed his pencil. We know a kind of a dance to do experimentally to measure this number very accurately, but we don't know what kind of a dance to do on a computer to make this number come out without putting it secretly. And considering the fact that electromagnetism is the most well studied and most well understood theories of physics, the idea of fine constant being completely mysterious to us obviously doesn't really add up. As a matter of fact, there is no theoretical way to discover this constant. It has to be measured, and only experiments were able to determine the exact number, which once again puts it as the biggest mystery of physics that nobody can currently answer. But once again, I'm calling it a constant, but that's the mystery though. We don't even know if it's a constant, and more importantly, if it's the same everywhere in the universe. Is it going to be the same if we go, let's just say, 100 million light years that way? Is it going to be the same in the opposite direction? And that's essentially one of the main questions the scientists were trying to answer in this recent paper. The paper that, as always, you can find in the description below. And the thing is, if this particular constant is not a constant, if it's only that number right here on planet Earth, and not really anywhere else in a galaxy, or more specifically other galaxies, it might actually help us explain a lot of other mysteries we don't understand, including a lot of things about the universe or why it's, for example, expanding so fast. And so if the fine structure constant is not a constant but differs, 
it would definitely help us understand the universe a little bit better. But it cannot change too much. For example, if we were to change the constant by about 4%, the stellar fusion inside our sun would no longer be able to produce certain elements, for example, carbon. And that would mean that any kind of carbon molecules or any organic molecules, or basically life, would practically become impossible. On the other hand, if this value goes too high up, for example, reaching the number 0.1, at some point, the stellar fusion itself, or any kind of energy produced through fusion, would become impossible as well. And that means no stars, no energy, complete and total darkness. However, some explanations suggested that if the fine constant was not a constant across the universe and differed too much, then the universe itself would also start to fall apart and possibly not even have matter in certain regions. And so the fact that we are seeing matter in a lot of regions of space and also seeing stars really far away as well means that the fine structure constant doesn't really change that much. But can it change a little bit? Can it be different enough to explain certain observations in, for example, distant parts of the universe where we don't really have better explanations? And so to test this, the scientists behind this new paper decided to do something relatively clever. They decided to focus on what we already know, things about our own sun. For example, this right here represents the fine structure from our sun. These are the spectroscopic lines of various elements in the sun's atmosphere. And we know these really well, and they're obviously very well measured because the sun is really close to us. Now, as I mentioned before, these lines that you see in this particular spectroscopy image, they're formed precisely in the way they're formed because of the fine structure constant. And so if we can do this around other stars, we can then maybe find the exact parameters for fine structure constant around those stars as well. But to make this easier and to make this more consistent, the scientists decided to focus only on stars extremely similar to our sun, so-called solar twins. They managed to find 16 of these stars that were practically indistinguishable from our own sun. Here's one of the spectroscopic frequencies they measured. And in this case, by taking a look at these 16 stars, they were able to extremely accurately calculate the fine structure constant for each of those 16 stars as well, comparing them to our sun. In the process performing the most accurate such calculation to date. And, well, so far, they haven't found a discrepancy. And according to the study, the fine structure constant was almost exactly the same, with the potential error being about 50 parts per billion. Although there is a small shortcoming to the study. Every single star here was sort of in our neighborhood, within about 160 light years away from planet Earth. And so this doesn't really tell us about the rest of the galaxy or the rest of the universe. But it does tell us about this new technique, which can now be used to try to test this elsewhere. And so there is now a possibility that this will be applied to some of the other stars, maybe even super, super far away, possibly even the stars that were detected by the James Webb telescope. And this might in the future help us determine if this right here is a constant everywhere in the universe, or if it does differ, helping us answer some of the questions that are currently mysteries of the universe. But this right now is still one of the biggest mysteries there is. Where exactly is it from? What sort of creates it? Why does it exist? Why is it almost exactly 1 over 137? And has it always been the same? We might be able to get some of the answers to these questions in some of the future studies, but at least for now, it does seem like the fine structure constant is maybe a constant after all. Which means that somewhere out there, if there is another person, another alien sitting on a chair thinking about it, they're probably not falling through the chair either. The electromagnetism works pretty much exactly the same there. At least that's the assumption for now. Until future studies, that's pretty much it. Check out relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.